down here? It's time to put the beam in. Okay. We have to cut that bottom cord of the truss, which undermines everything, right? It undermines the strength of these walls because they want to go like that or like that, and they've got nothing stopping them with that cut. And it undermines the roof because the weight of the roof is coming down onto that ceiling joist. So that's what all this is. That's what all this pink framing is. If you watched the last exciting episode, propping both sides, that's what that's all about. I could have made the beam a bit higher, could have got it above the ceiling joist and then we wouldn't have to cut it, but we needed to maximize airspace up here. That beam's big and that ceiling space isn't the biggest. So any higher and we'd be closing it off and not getting that ventilation. So that's what we've got to do this morning. We've got to cut these ceiling joists and hopefully the house doesn't collapse. So we're on the edge of our stud there and the edge of this stud here. I won't lie to you, I'm a little bit nervous. For, um, one three two. I one think. three two. So no movement. Well, if it's one three five at the wall and one three five at the middle, it shouldn't uh, have moved. So and that's all one three five. So we cut the ceiling and the house didn't fall apart. Because of how long it is, we kind of need to go in dead straight in order to get up that gap that we just cut. It got really hot. That's why I changed my t-shirt. All right, let me. Yep. Where are you going? <laughs> you got screws? That's where the beam comes in. Should we jump ahead to that? Good coffee. Okay, so where are we at? The beam, not nearly as out of square as I thought it would be. We actually didn't even adjust the circular saw when we cut all of this. We just kept it square. And honestly, it's pretty good. In terms of parallel with the building, it's 130 mil over eight and a half meters. So you do the math. The beam should be arriving any minute now. We have an opening here. And more importantly, we have some volunteers. Hey buddy. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing? How are you? Raymond. I'm Gaston. Oh man. Yes. Like you've been coerced into this. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them we threatened you. Ready to do some lifting? Stand back and watch yeah. the magic happen. <laughs> There's an up and a down on these beams. They anticipate the weight that's going to eventually be on it and they make the camera go upward. And then, then it might go down over the ears. Now this is the right length, right? Well, check! Whoa! Oh. <laughs> check! That's a joke. Oh my god, that's so stressful. <laughs> Easy! Yep. Grab it, grab it. Oh my lord! Okay. 
No hernias. All right. Right, the tree. Nice. We've just cut that tree down. Yeah. <laughs> right, we might have to go in, get past the tree, and then come out. Okay. If it's too tight. Hold on. Hold on. Just, oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Just. <laughs> we're, like the, we're like the Daltons, eh? What's that? <laughs> Off, uh, lucky loop. I'm holding it on my, on my leg. <laughs> Alright. Running out of room. Alright. Oh, so much... Now we're at the lift point, how we get on. Well, should I get in any further? That's it. Is there anything to drop it on? That's it. Alright, the race coming in. And then I think we uh, try and lift this in, right? And get up on that frame. Easy. Oh, Easy. Yeah. Look at that. Go back a little bit. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Now push. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sounds like labour. Uh, <laughs> it's easy compared with labour. <laughs> okay. We've got 140 mil. Okay, we, we're going to need to go up onto the top plate there, Gaston. Yeah, we need to go way up, mate. Okay. A little bit more? Yep. Yep, about there. Okay. And now we're going to tilt it forward and go up. Uh, nice. Oh, we're in. We're in at the other end. That's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Are we up? Up yet, Gaston, or do we need a bit more? Are you on the top plate? Yes. Oh, I get it up there, Okay, guys, do we need to uh, get a ladder, maybe? Hold on. Not me. No time to call mom. That's one. Round two. Round two. First one was a breeze, eh? Yeah, yeah it looked easy as. Warm up. Mm. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. We're going up, get some towards the roof. Yes. Alright, Eva? Yeah. Yeah, we're putting it in position. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's just the idea. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Alright, you ready to get Watch your hands, buddy. You got the ears. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, no, great. Yeah. Someone is on. Stop Christchurch up there. Okay. This is how all the guys disappear. Huh? This is how all of us disappear. I guess <laughs> <laughs> oh, this means I have to go up too. Uh, okay. Yep, yep, yep. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> Can it come to me five mil? Ah. <laughs> nice job. Woohoo. Right. I'll take my sauna for the day. I, 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 this is uh, came from two different guys, and uh, no one in Queensland, Easy. one in uh, Nah, the, that was yeah, that was hard work. It looked like hard work. Yeah, it's not as reliable as curling off my forehead here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a huge fan. It is kind of terrifying. It's just no. hanging Whereas there. Has not has attachment. Yeah. That went great. That went fantastic. Everything just slotted in so nicely. We gave it six mil more than the total width of the beam. And we still need to laminate the beam together, and that's where I'm going. I'm going to get some bugle screws that will help us do that. But without a hitch. And having those guys help was, it wouldn't have happened without those guys helping me. But now we get to laminate it together and put in a lot of joists. Now, Eva, along with their muscle power, Eva and Chris also bought the Hikoki Metal Connector. It's basically a nail gun that nails on joist hangers rather than doing it by hand. So I got 500, 125 millimeter long batten screws and that's what we're going to laminate them together with.
Cheers. All right, so what we have here, it's the first screw, 100 mil from the end, and then it's roughly at 300 centers all the way along. This is started at the other end. And it's three rows because it's more than 300 high. This is 450 high, this thing. Then on the opposite side of the beam, we have the opposite screw pattern just about. So this screw will be coming through here and ending up there. And then again, 300 centers all the way down. Is So the impact driver was getting a bit hot, all that friction I guess. So I've moved over to the drill. And watch how smooth it goes in. Honestly, I didn't even feel anything just about. Oh. Yeah, it's good. It does look like it eats your battery. Mm. A bit more than the uh, impact. It's really hard to tell the difference. I mean, they look exactly the same. I mean, they look the same, right? Look, I guess this is where the action is at the end. That's the regular gun. It's got the dial and this one doesn't. And then the nozzle, that's where it all happens. That little thing there is what we want for the joist hangers. This is your regular nail gun nozzle. It says metal connector on the top there. And they take these nails here that have got a full round head, which is quite different to your typical nails that have a D head and they're spaced apart to allow for that round head. Oh, oh seven on the side. Yeah. <laughs> James Bond action. <laughs> License to nail. <laughs> What's your rafter space? 400, 450? 400 probably? Yeah. Now it just needs to go up another 3 mil. There we go. So you line that little point up. This point. Yeah, you line that little point into the hole. Then make sure that the nail goes into the hole. Works really well. You, go, you were struggling with the joist spacing and not getting the right angle. But yeah. That's more than 100 mils uh, shorter. So in tight spaces, you, you probably want that one. These ceiling joists are set just under 400 mil centers. It's probably like 380 center to center. And that difference is just enough for the nail gun not to get in there. And then you're forced to put it on an angle and it doesn't make the connection that it needs to make for the gun to fire. It's just my, my joists are closer together than usual. Yeah. On a modern house, it'd be 400 centers and you wouldn't have this problem. In the next exciting episode, all of this comes down. This wall, all these props, we've just got to secure the roof and the ceiling to our new beam. And then it becomes one big room. Stay tuned for the next exciting episode.